Today I have a Techniques semi-automatic direct drive turntable up for repair. This is an SL 1400 Mark II, which was one of the better turntables that Techniques made back in, I guess it would be mid 80s, I guess. This one's got a bit of a problem with the auto stop. It's not lifting the uh, tone arm up, and if you press the stop button, it's gonna put a nice big scratch in the record. Let's uh, see what's going wrong with this one. Here's a Techniques SL 1400 Mark II. And the problem with this one is when you press the start button, the cueing arm is not working. So I think we're probably gummed up here in the mechanism. If I start it playing manually, it will play. I don't know if it's going to pick up at the end of the record or not, so let's just see whether it will actually pick up at the end of the record or whether it'll just sit there and go forever. Okay. As you can see. And it just scratched the record. It's not picking the arm up. So that's the uh, that's the problem with this one. Let's uh, tear into this and see what the problem is. First thing we'll do is we'll remove the cartridge so that I don't have to worry about the cartridge being damaged. This is a nice sure cartridge that's on here. So we'll put that away for safekeeping. First we'll remove the turntable platter. You'll notice that this one here we got to keep make sure that we don't get any anything uh, magnetic in here, any iron filings or anything because you notice that on the bottom of the platter this is a direct drive. So this is actually a magnet and this is the FG generator so that the uh, servo can detect the speed and how it works on this. I'm just going to place this somewhere where it won't uh, be uh, damaged. Here's the stator assembly. As you can see, it's multiple coils. It's a three-phase motor and high torque. So this will start in about one quarter to one third of a turn from dead stop to full speed. This is the frequency generator pickup here. These pickups, these two, these two pick up the. Uh, uh, this is your your FG or your your Hull effect sensor that detects, first of all, what direction it's turning because the three-phase um, motor drive generates a rotating magnetic field through the three different coils. So first it needs to determine where the motor is and what direction it's going and what speed. And that's what these two offset pickup coils do is they determine the direction that the motor's turning and the speed. You can see there's actually three of them here that are used to detect the rotation of the motor. So there's one pickup coil here, one pickup coil over here, and one over here. Next, in order to protect the cover when I turn it over, I'm going to throw some newspaper on top of it here. That way I can turn the unit over, and I've already, I've already secured the arm, so the arm's not going anywhere. Now I can turn the turntable upside down so that I can work on it from the bottom. We'll remove the screws. Next, I believe I have to remove, see that the, the, the motor and everything is all attached to the base on this unit here. And I basically, you're going to have to remove the arm assembly from the base and lift the base away. It's been a long time since I've opened up one of these units. An awful long time. This is a, this is a floating chassis. So... I want to try and lift the, the mechanism away or lift the base off. I now need to remove this piece so that I can lift the whole uh, top off to get at the, uh, the mechanism. And then this piece will lift out. And now I should be able to taking my counterweight off on here. I should be able to now lift the entire unit off and unplug it from the motor here. And 
I should be able to lift this entire cover off and unplug it. And then I'll have accessibility to the uh, got another connector here, and there's one more at the back there, I believe. That's it. Now this whole top should lift off. Oh, one more. One more connector. Now this whole top cover will lift away. And I now have access to the uh, rest of the unit. As you'll see, just like uh, conventional, like at a Duel or anybody else's, it's still a mechanically controlled, there's a gear here that gets activated. So that's what moves the arm. So it's controlled by the solenoid. So once the solenoid kicks in, it activates the arm, which is supposed to lift up the record. It's supposed to lift it up here. And then as this slide plate slides, it moves the arm back. But what's happening in this case, and here's the little cam that triggers it, that's triggered by a solenoid. But what's happening in this one is the, the actual arm is not being lifted up. So um, that's the problem. And it's going to be that this is gummed up. And it is really quite gummed up. And it's just the, I think it's just the, it would have like a, a silicone oil on there that has, that has just gotten really gummy and, and thick and viscosity has gone up. So it's just going to be just cleaning up the grease on this thing. I think that should get this one back in operation. To remove the tone arm to work on the underside of the mechanism, there are three screws to remove. One over here one here and there's a third one that's under this plastic or rubber cap this one here is to set the pickup point there's an adjustment there to set the pickup point so we remove these three screws and the top half of the arm assembly should lift away and now I can get to the bottom side of this where I can lubricate the parts that are getting gummed up okay See, here's how it determines when it's going to pick the record up is it's got this arm or this uh, sensor that triggers a, 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 a sensor. It tells you, see, it tells it where the record is. You can see the markings. It's an optical sensor. So when the, when the arm goes in, when the record is playing, it starts out over here. As the record is playing, this sensor here you can see the slots in the sensor. This trips a photo sensor. And when it starts to move over at a specific speed in the middle, so that way if the record is recorded further in to the center of the groove, uh, it won't pick up prematurely. It waits until it actually sees a frequency generated by these slots. If we look closely here, these little slots. you can see in the edge here I'm pointing to them right here as the arm starts to move faster because of course when the record is playing the arm is moving very slow right but once it gets to the end of the music and the, the needle is now moving closer to the, the last groove this will move faster and when that passes over this photo sensor here there's a, a, a transistor a photo diode on one side and a photo transistor on the other this is the phototransistor side, as you can see, because it's marked emitter and collector. So the light source is shining through. When the light source starts to shine through, when this, it, it, if the record is recorded further into the to the uh, center of the groove, as long as this is moving slow, nothing's going to happen. But as soon as it starts to move faster, which would happen at the end of the actual record, um, re recorded information, and the groove is starting to move to the end track. This will move faster, that will be detected by the phototransistor, and it will then signal the unit to pick up the record at the end, and the record is done. What I'm looking for here is I'm looking for the, the uh, dampening arm, which is this one right here. This is the dampening arm here that is gummed up. You can see it's, held, it's pulled back by a spring. This is the dampening arm here. This is gummed up, so I'm going to clean this up, get that grease out of there, and free that up so that this is going to operate a little more freely, and uh, that should uh, solve my problem. I'm just going to disconnect this last connector over here 
so that I can move the arm. So I'm going to disconnect this connector. I'm going to disconnect the ground wire here so that I can work on this outside of being around the chassis. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the E-clip here that's on the the arm lifter. spring and the washer and now I'm going to remove the actual uh, arm lifter so that I can clean up the the uh, the, the, the actual bearing itself the, the sleeve so I'm just going to move the arm out of the way so that I can lift this up I'm going to put a drop of oil onto this shaft there and this should free up the existing lubricant enough much better than it was. Okay, I'll put the spring and the the washer and the uh, clip back on. Okay, now when I press the spring up, it comes back down and it drops slowly like it's supposed to because it, it is a dampened mechanism Let's put the arm back on the top here I had kind of had the camera off here while I was working, but this this lever is, was broken. This lever here had a crack. I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. There was a crack right here on this arm, and this was separated. This is the cueing arm. When you turn this, it turns this entire arm like this, and this is what moves the... And I guess what happened was when this froze, um, it broke. But anyway, there's the cueing arm. And this turns back and forth. Now what this does here is, and I apologize that I thought the camera was running when it wasn't. Um, there's a switch here. I just, just I just took this off. I'll put this back on momentarily. There's a switch here that mutes the sound. It mutes the cartridge when uh, you lift the arm. Anyway, there was a crack in this gear right here, which I don't think I'll ever, ever find, or this lever. I'll never find this lever. So what I did was I pushed the two back together push the two ends back together and I just use my soldering iron to melt the plastic and fuse the plastic back together in this slot right down there. I've got my headlight on now so that I can make it easier for me to see what I'm doing. But uh, I thought I had the camera running and uh, stupid me, I heard the thing beep. But uh, I just got another argument with the posty because I was looking up at my, my monitor and I saw that I heard a door close and I looked up and it was the postal guy and he showed up again and he shoved three pieces of mail in the box and dropped another package at the door. And I just ripped them a new one. And he just kind of ignored me as he walked away. But what, what can you do, right? Anyway, um, let's say I thought the camera was running, but it wasn't. But this gear, this lever was broken. And you can see where I fused it back together. Let me put the switch back together. So I have to, there's a... This little claw here has to go into the side of the switch. This is what uh, mutes the sound. You'll see that there's a switch here. 
there's a little piece there that this that this claw fits into. And then there's a couple screws that hold this in place. There's one there. There's a longer one that goes down through here. And there's one more that goes down through the ground. Okay, now if I lift the arm up, the arm lifts, the arm drops. That part is fixed. Another uh, that's the adjustment for the that one's the adjustment for the uh, anti skating. So that one's okay. That moves freely. I think it was just this one, this lever here, and. Uh, the uh, dampening arm it was at fault. So now, as you can see, it'll lift up. So let's put the, uh, before I put the tone arm back on, I want to just lubricate the rest of this mechanism here. Because uh, some of the grease is going to be drying up on that too, so let's just bring the chassis back a bit. Set this over to the side and I think this one's probably okay. The grease here doesn't look to be dried up. We'll wipe it down. Yeah, this stuff's okay. This grease is okay. Okay, I'm going to place the tone arm back on. And I want to make sure that it goes through the motions manually here when I turn the gear by hand before I try powering it up.
lifts it up, brings the tow arm back, and stops. I think that works. We'll try that one more time. Move the torn arm over, activate the mechanism. It lifts it, moves it back, and stops. That's what we want to see. Let's uh, put the unit back together and make sure it functions properly. So we start out by moving the tone arm in so that I can set the mechanism over top. And then I've got, of course, hook up the uh, appropriate connectors. We'll set the, I got some connectors I have to do up here too. Get the audio connector on first. Now there should be one more back here, wherever it's hiding. There it is. Okay, now I just got to set the mechanism back in. The alignment correct. I know someone's going to question, how long do I think the uh, fixing of that lever is going to last? And the answer to that question is, I don't know. There's no way of knowing how long that piece is going to last. But with no parts available because of the age of this unit, there's not a chance that I'm going to get a new part. Possibly one could be 3D printed. Again, that's something that won't be cheap. I don't have access to a 3D printer. Uh, I don't know anybody who has a 3D printer, and those companies out there that have it are not going to print a part for free. There'd be setup time, scanning time, modeling time, all kinds of time involved to print out a part. And then you've got a, a client that owns this thing that doesn't want to spend hundreds upon hundreds of dollars to fix it. So that's, that's the situation, is that people want to keep their old units working, but they also don't want to spend a small fortune doing so. You know, today I just 
spent the last hour or so going into one of the few remaining suppliers of VCR parts and picked up some parts to fix an SLV R1000 which will be coming up here next. get to balance the tone arm again on this unit. Gonna balance this to approximately two grams. So how we do that is we'll, we'll wind the counterweight out and find a point where the, the tone armor is going to hang roughly level roughly there We'll set our marker to zero. It's hanging roughly level there. Set it to two grams. Now our, our counterweight is now set for two grams. Let's uh, see if this thing plays. So I've hooked it up to my amplifier. The way these turntables were set up, I believe these were a manual start. I think you had to start these up manually. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure these were a manual start. You move the arm over, you press the start button, the unit would start turning, and then you could drop your arm down and play your music. Press the stop button, it should pick up, and which it does, returns and stops. You could also put the record over directly. Radio stations would do this. Cue your record. You know. Go back your half a turn or so. And then when you hit the start button, because he's had such high torque, the record would be cued. If you stop it manually, when I move the arm back, it should stop the turntable from spinning without going through the, 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 the actual stop button on here, which it does. It stops turning, right? I can cue it up to the next track. When I hit the start button, So a lot of radio stations, a lot of DJs, you see how quick that stops because it has a magnetic brake. It just stops the motor, right? Um, a lot of radio stations would use a turntable like this because they could cue the record. I think this is a live recording, so... They could cue the recording up. And then when they're ready to start playing, hit the start button. And I see my SLM1, mine's actually a start-stop, or I can stop it, and it'll stop just as quick. This one here stops when you return the uh, arm. There's also a switch over here called Auto Return On and Off. I think if we turn it off, will that stop it? If we have it playing... It'll still stop, but I think if we turn that off, it won't. I don't know if it'll, if it'll stop at the end there, or whether it'll just keep going. Yeah, if you've got the auto return button turned off, it won't stop playing at the end. So we'll auto return turned on.
it stops. Auto return turned off and it doesn't. If you just simply press the start button, it doesn't start playing the record automatically. You have to actually pick the needle up and drop it, either using the cueing arm or just dropping. Now the cueing arm, is say it activates, as I start to move the cueing arm, it'll actually shut the audio off before it picks the, the needle up. There's a, that was that mute switch. Cueing arm is not necessary to use. And for that matter, if you didn't want the auto return on, you could turn that off and then operate this as a fully manual turntable. Start it up. When you're done, stop it. So it's a semi-automatic. I have an SLM-1. That's my personal turntable that I use as an SLM-1. And um, the difference between this and the SLM-1 is mine. I still have to start it manually like this, but on mine, I have a button for queuing up and down. So I don't have a lever, I have a button that does it. And uh, mine, when it gets to the end, it just, lifts the, it just lifts the arm and stops. It does not return. It's more manual than this. This one, they call it automatic, but it doesn't start. It only stops. One more time, right at the end here. to make people like me. Bye! There you go, making some trips. Arm picks up. Arm returns. You know, it shuts off. Other features of this turntable were uh, it had uh, a pitch control. So if you're playing something, you could adjust you could adjust the pitch up and down. You can go up up to 9.9 percent up, right? And you could go up to 9.9 percent .9 down as well on both 33 and 45 and on 45 obviously it's going to return faster because it's driven by the actual turntable motor anyway that's uh, this one thanks for watching we'll catch you again in the next one real soon bye for now